Now there are two of them down. Now there are three of them down. Until the last fleshy pad was his only support. With this he had clung to the stick for a long time. Then in one sudden moment he fell free. And his body was swinging head down from the silk button which he had spun. For the larva, it was a ceremony marking the acceptance of death at the end of life, tempered by centuries of intuitive knowledge that life, in turn, would follow this seeming death. In a few minutes, the caterpillar became quiet, and slowly it changed to that of the shape of the capital J. Whether he knew it or not, the caterpillar was dying. He had been dying since his wanderings and restlessness began. He could no longer eat, and his powers of regeneration and emulation were gone. Already, the process of his solacesis, by which his organs would be destroyed, had begun. And whether he knew it or not, out of his larval death would come a new life. And it was for this that he himself had lived. For the caterpillar himself had no ability to create, no power to reproduce himself in kind. He was neither male nor female. He was born only to nourish the life which was to come, a life which could only reproduce and lack the power to grow or to develop. In the metamorphic process, in this chrysalis, he would develop into a mature butterfly. He hung from his stick for a day and a night. When he again awakened to life as a butterfly, it would be drinking the nectar of flowers, not devouring their leaves. For 17 or 18 hours, he looked much like he did when he originally went into J position. But looks are very deceiving. The caterpillar is gone, gone forever. In his place, an immature Christmas had been forming. I am going to reread what I read early in the lecture. It is so appropriate in these 20 hours. But more marvelous than the egg of the butterfly <coughs> was the fragile world within it. For it held not only life, but the possibility of transformation from life to life, from one living creature to another seemingly unrelated form. This is an enlarged view of the caterpillar in the J position these last few hours before the fifth moon. But he is not a caterpillar anymore. Look at those three pairs of shiny, glossy bag, black legs. Those legs in the metamorphic process will become the long, spindly legs of the butterfly. Now the caterpillar is about to mold for the fifth time but he is not a caterpillar anymore. His clear colors are beginning to fade. The filaments that once stood straight up are now hanging limp and twisted. Stretching himself to his fullest length, with his body hanging down, taking the shape of the capital I, the skin began to split at the bottom of the larva where the head is situated. As the new creature began to emerge from its last larval skin, helpless, blind, and formless, it bore no resemblance whatsoever to the larva we saw before it went into the J form. His legs, and head disappeared entirely, leaving it a helpless, immature Christmas, but possessing two intuitive skills, 
skills to be used only once, and according to his dexterity in using them, he will, in one moment, either he would die or live, he would live or die. At this place in the fifth moment, I am going to stop the action for several minutes. If I had shown more slides of the immature chrysalis pushing its skin up towards the top, and if the, it and if he would have surely and it I should have started that again. And if he would have failed to use his first intuitive skill, he would have surely fallen out of his caterpillar skin and died. When I start showing the remaining slides of the fifth mold, you will see why he must be able to accomplish the first intuitive skill. Enclosed within his larval skin, at the end of his abdomen, is a black stalk, or properly called a cremaster, equipped with minute hooks, many of them, which faced in all directions. In the second intuitive skill, he must remove this cremaster out from under his old caterpillar skin and insert its hooks into the pearly ball of silk which he could neither see nor feel. And I'm saying this is acrobatic and this is something that you can't believe. He can't see nor feel. Now then, Lorena. In order to come, accomplish the first of his intuitive skills, the immature chrysalis must support and secure himself by grasping a part of his dead caterpillar skin, otherwise it fall out, between two segments of his spongy abdomen. Now he is hanging and suspended in mid-air in limbo, a dangerous maneuver to say the least. It will hang in limbo, fastened only to a small segment of the old skin until the cremaster has inserted its hooks into the tiny ball of silk. I think you will appreciate all the more how important it is for the immature chrysalis to perform his first intuitive skill when you see what happens in the second intuitive skill. He must withdraw his cremaster out from under the old skin. Roping in the dark, the cremaster is struggling to get out of the old caterpillar skin. In, it maneuvers, now that it's in its, out of its old skin, it maneuvers back and forth. Show the cremaster, would you? See that, that one we showed it as a large and large. Now watch that thing. Now that it is all out and over, out of the old skin, it maneuvers back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. I began to wonder if the cremaster knew what it was doing. It cannot see or feel the small silk button. Finally, the cremaster takes straight aim at the silk button and inserts its cremaster hooks into the pearly ball of silk. When this extraordinary acrobatic and dangerous feat has been ex executed, the green immature Christmas writhes and twisted violently until the tiny hooks of the caterpillar were firmly hooked into the pearly ball of silk. And at the same time, the chrysalis was still, while the skill, while the chrysalis was still writhing and twisting, the anoclaster, along with the old skin, fell to the ground. In a few seconds, he stopped twisting. Then he grew still. Three cheers for the immature chrysalis. 
no more dangerous and acrobatic skills need to be used. But in its stillness, it was gradually changing its form. In an hour, the striped Afghan became a pale green and shrunk to one third of its original size, and the wings expanded into two graceful triangles. <coughs> See the gold band that is beginning to form around the Christmas. Some people who study butterflies think the gold band is a sensor which will tell the butterfly when to emerge from its Christmas. It will not emerge when the weather is cold, cloudy, dark, or rainy. Still changing its form, it began to look rather withered as the softness of evening light faded. The immature Christmas hung safely from his leaf all night gradually changing and being perfected. Early in the morning, the change from the caterpillar to Christmas was complete. For once the withered larvas hung, there was now a pendant of polished jade, which seemed in no way related either to the larva or to the shapeless drop of the night before. This is the beautiful, mature Christmas. What a beautiful jade green urn in which the metamorphosis will be completed. See the gold beads that are surrounding the Christmas? Also notice the gold dots at the bottom of the Christmas? To me, it is one of the most beautiful of many kinds of Christmas that I have ever seen. Jo Brewer, again, in her book, Wings in the Meadow, writes her thoughts and feelings of the mature Christmas. With the fifth moan, the caterpillar sheds its caterpillar identity to become a Christmas, a beautiful jade green shell filled with a liquid mass of immature and embryonic organs, some organs that are deteriorating and some organs that are being constructed from recently activated butterfly cells. Each Christmas is a capsule in which the mysteries of dying and being born again are simultaneously and silently acted out in the darkness of the shell. I want to read that once more. Each Christmas is a capsule in which the mysteries of dying and being born again are simultaneously and silently acted out in the darkness of the shell. For two weeks, the beautiful jade green Christmas graced our living room. Sometime later, perhaps several hours, the green color began to fade. Within a day, it turned black in color. From past experience, I knew it was about time for the butterfly to emerge from its skin. But how much is about time? One minute? Two minutes? Ten minutes? Half an hour? Or maybe an hour? If you expect to see the butterfly emerge from its skin, you had better stay within sight of the Christmas. In five minutes, the skin of the Christmas split, splits. Almost simultaneously, seven fracture lines occur in predetermined seams. There are splits in the front and on the sides and on behind. It takes a good deal of energy for the butterfly to open these fractures. However, these splits in the skin make for a relatively easy time for the butterfly to emerge. There are four spindly legs you can see in the slide. Each leg has two needle-sharp hooks. 
They must be hooked into the old Christmas skin before the butterfly will emerge. It will take two or three minutes from the time the skin glitz to the time the butterfly emerges from the Christmas skin. Notice the small, immature wings. They do not grow any larger. The wings will expand like an accordion opens its bellows. Notice the plump abdomen. It is not the way a normal butterfly's abdomen looks. The abdomen is filled with a fluid which the butterfly will pump into its wings and make the tiny wings expand to its fullest length. It will take about an hour for the wings to harden. What a beautiful, mature butterfly. Some time later, he opened and closed his wings a few times, as, <coughs> as if to see whether they were in good working order. Or maybe it was just the wonderful feeling of being liberated from its Christmas. Notice, Lorena, notice the two black spots on the wings next to the abdomen. Little lower, there, on each side. This tells me that the butterfly is a male monarch butterfly. These black spots are scales scented, scented with an aroma the male butterfly walks into the air and attracts the female butterfly to the male butterfly. I would like to show two more slides. One summer, several years ago, when we lived in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, we had 77 Christmas hanging on a wall on our porch at different times during the summer months. One day, as I did several times a day, I spent several minutes observing these Christmas. I noticed a butterfly emerging from its shell. For some reason, as it emerged, even when the wings were still soft, there seemed, to, there seemed to be something special in the color of its wings. As the wings were drying and hardening, I was overwhelmed by the beauty of the saturated and rich color of this female butterfly. I just stood there thrilled by its beauty. After I was sure the wings had hardened, which takes at least an hour, I gently placed my finger on the, on the spot next to where the legs were fastened. Sure enough, it began to walk on my finger and onto my hand. It didn't seem to be afraid. Maybe it appreciated the warmth of my finger and hand. Its eyesight is exceptionally good. Notice the erect filaments. As a young boy, I used to call these filaments feelers. I am sure it recognized me. For there we talked together for a little while. I thought I heard it say, Thank you for taking good care of me and protecting me. Well, what could I say but thank you, dear friend. Note the black stripes on her beautiful wings. Finally, I walked back to the old discarded skin and it readily walked onto it. After several hours, the butterfly began to exercise her wings, and in, in and out, the time had come. Gently, it lifted itself from the old skin and flew around in a large circle. And then, circling around again close to me, she gave me an extra flutter as if to say, goodbye, 
And now Lorena has something to say in closing.